All right, let's talk to Doug Ottawill from Mile High Sports. Mile High Sports Magazine, milehighsports.com. Oh, we got the Supers back. What's up, Doug? That's oh, great. Yeah, Good you to see do. you, sir. How you doing, You guys? showed up on the Orange and Blue Review with Orange and Blue. Yeah, mm. I told you guys. Fantastic. I, uh, you know, we look like we're uh, like you. Barnum and Bailey clowns up here. We do. But hey, <laughs> we clown. we'll take it, right? Yeah, why not? We'll Who cares? It. All right, Doug, um, we know Brock's going to start, right? I mean, is there yeah. any doubt that this is the right move? E even if Peyton was healthy, would you make this move? No, uh, or yes, I would make I would too. I mean, there, there's no reason to not start him. I mean, he, he had a nice game. He had an efficient game. He had a mistake-free game. Not, right. not mistake-free. He made a couple small mistakes. Right. Nothing colossal. Including so kicking Ronnie Hillman's feet out yeah. from under him. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? That, that yeah. happened to Jay Cutler. Same game. That's veteran right. quarterback. It happens to Aaron Rodgers, yeah. Tom no, Brady. That, I mean, that stuff happens. That's an accident. Right. right. I think uh, everything's going to be easy when you win, though. So, I mean, not to get ahead of ourselves and not to be the wet blanket or the wet Zubas, as it were. Mm -hmm. Keep those things What's going to happen after next week when a very, very good Patriots team comes in yeah. and beats the Broncos? And I'm not saying that's going to happen, but it's, it's likely going to happen. That's right. what the favorite by five and a half. Yeah. That's what the people in Las Vegas will tell you will happen. Well, I think that's what we're saying game to game. I mean, Brock earned a, earned a chance to start this game, and Peyton still isn't healthy. If the, if the Patriots come in, beat the Broncos, Brock doesn't play so well against a much tougher team, an undefeated team going into tonight, uh, and Peyton's healthy the next week, then you make a game decision on that week. There's nothing set. Brock's our guy for the rest right. of the year, yeah. or Peyton's out for the rest of the year. This right. is game to game. Right? And they're, they're wise in establishing that sort of set of criteria. Right. But I think that, you know, if we can agree that, hey, this is going to be a much tougher game. I mean, the Bears aren't the Patriots. Tom Brady isn't Jay Cutler. No. Bill Belichick certainly is not John Fox. This we know. I, I mean, there's going to be a completely different vibe after this game. If they win, this is Brock's job for the rest of the year. I agree. No question. I agree. If they beat the Patriots and he plays well against New England, it, why rock the boat? Right. It, it, it kind of goes back to the old uh, Bledsoe Brady shift with the Patriots. I mean, you know, once it happened, it happened, and it was all over as a Tom Brady show from there on out. But. You know, if it's if it's an ugly loss, and I hope it's not, but if it is, right, what happens? Because this thing is going to get uglier and not prettier <laughs> with a loss. Yeah. Well, look, a, a loss would give Gary Kubiak the perfect opportunity to reinsert Peyton, yeah. right? right? To say, hey, look, okay, we, we gave it a shot. Let's give uh, the Hall of Famer another go. But, you know, I really believe... This change could galvanize the club, and we heard that from the locker room yesterday. We had a meeting. Brock addressed the team. They bought into it, said, I'm ready, kicking and screaming, and the team played for him yesterday. I, I really believe, no matter what happens with the Patriots, this sets a great tone for Brock Osweiler down the road. You yeah, mean? I 100% agree, and I think it was, it was huge of Brock to do that, to take that kind of leadership step and say, hey, team meeting on me. You guys do your job. I'll do mine. I, I just think... Setting the tone was was very well done for a guy that has doesn't have an NFL start. Mm -hmm. So it, it is it's a galvanizing thing. You can tell that those guys were happy and enthusiastic and everything. But you know if you're if you're really evaluating the performance, I mean it was a nice performance, right? Very nice performance. It wasn't great. Mm -mm. It was it, almost it, exactly how Peyton's first say. performance was in his start for the Broncos, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then look at the big picture. Brock said, "Don't." Uh, don't say I led the team to victory. This was this was a team victory. Uh, the defense got gashed a few times, but when they needed to, they stepped up and, and shut down that that two point conversion. And that's the hot play of the game. The Broncos defense stops the two point conversion in the final seconds to make the final score 17 to 15. T.J. Ward came off the corner and shut it down. The D line stuffed in there. That is our Bojo's Pizza hot play of the game. Mountain pies, Colorado style pizza, Bojo's. You gotta get it, but hot play of the game there. The defense came through um, when they had to, or else this would have been in overtime. Yeah, pretty much, right? Let's not confuse this with a dumb play of the game, <laughs> which was also T.J. Ward with the late hit. True. We, we've we've seen undisciplined play on defense. Another eight penalties. Yeah. Becoming a reoccurring theme. Do you guys have a sponsor for the John Fox play of the game? <laughs> because that we should. That was that was yeah that, that was, was uh, classic Foxy right there. Oh man! Hey, go for two to tie the game. What do you say we run the most basic up the gut right. running play we can? <laughs> Just hand it off, right? Yeah. yeah. Don't put it in the quarterback's hand. No, no, no. Well, at least you didn't do. take a knee because that was an option. <laughs> yeah. I saw someone on Twitter saying, 
John Fox scrambling around the sidelines asking coaches whether you go for one or two in that situation. <laughs> right. Maybe that's a little Come easier. on, man. Foxy. <laughs> yeah. I love Fox. And the post-game interview was, was classic Fox where he said a lot without right. saying anything. Didn't say a word, yeah. Um, but, yeah, you're right. Not only the same Foxy, but the same Jay Cutler, right? A guy who's just good enough to get you there, but not good enough to get you over the top. Yeah. It, and I would have I would have put the ball in his hands if yeah, I'm Fox. Me too. I mean, he was making plays on that drive. But. Absolutely. I mean, look, a play in the goal line like that is a play fake. Roll out the quarterback, drag the tight end who fakes a block, then comes out, right. have a receiver. That is never stopped in the history oh. of the NFL. And, never. And it, and it least gives yourself some options. Right. You, color can you, scramble you in it. Right. You throw it. You get a penalty. I mean, there's a lot of things that can happen. Right. That's that the ball than up off the middle. Up the is, middle. That's the dumbest thing yeah. in the world. It was the, the, the John Fox situation. play of the game.